Welcome watercolor students. I just wanted to take a minute to welcome you to the class and to show you some of the supplies I use while I'm at home or when I'm out and about and traveling. Um, so I uh, have my travel palette, I have my travel bag, and so I'll just show you, get started showing you that stuff in case you ever fall in love with watercolors and want to do it as much as I do. Alright, so this is my handy dandy watercolor bag. Okay, and it's a tiny little backpack, it's like a little sling, it's like the size of a purse. And in it I have like, this is my uh, scope bottle that I washed out and I put water in, so it's like my spare water. Um, I took a vitamin container and cleaned it up and it becomes a handy dandy. It's got a wide mouth so I can use it to uh, dip my paintbrush in while I'm out and about. It does not leak. I have tissues in case I need to correct anything or want to use some uh, blotting techniques. I have my water brushes. I have a watercolor pencil for sketching something out real quick. I've got rulers, straight edge with a out of a clean popsicle stick, pencil, good eraser, um, and I also already have it out, but I've got my washi tape. I use that to tape down paintings. Um, and this section is empty right now because I have everything out, but it's normally where I keep some of my brushes and my watercolor journal or notebook. And also I will keep um, my palettes in there and then I have this handy Danny spray bottle which is phenomenal for wetting your colors quickly without having to use up your other paint. Um, so you can do All your paints are ready to go. Alright, so on the travel palette note, here's my travel palette. This one is just a simple cheap meat-in one that I bought on Amazon and as you see it's nice the way it folds out you get extra space to uh, mix your colors on and uh, normally this center section is empty and that's so that you can put a travel brush it doesn't come with one but you can put a travel brush in there this is my silver brush black velvet I just dropped it and it folds up and fits in there but my problem is I love colors so I'd rather uh, carry my brush somewhere else and use it to add in half pans and more colors. The colors that I use in my palettes, uh, because I'm trying to do some professional work or I'm doing stuff that I want to be light fast, so you need the professional colors so you don't want it to fade if somebody hangs it up on their wall. And uh, so you want the professional grade. So all of these but two in this current palette are actually professional grade. So if I'm doing a professional um, watercolor, then I will uh, avoid my two colors that aren't professional grade. Um, and light fast. Uh, the colors in this palette, they're all M gram, with the exception of these two, the Quinacridone Rose and this Ultramarine, um, which are both Daniel Smith. And then these two colors, just because mainly I can't afford to buy the uh, Thalo Green and a Cerulean Blue in another professional grade yet. It's on my list. But these are both the Lucas paints, um, which are great student grade paint, and they're the ones that we will be using in class. Um, they have a really great pigment load. They um, really do well. Um, they granulate. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but they're just they're good student grade and they're affordable. And so that's why we're using them in class, because I'd rather use that than Crayola. But if you're at home and you have a Crayola set, use that Crayola set because you know what I've used Crayola sets and made some pretty awesome sauce uh, paintings and you can too so don't let that stop you. Uh, the reasons I like M grams and most of my paints are always M grams is because I love uh, their pigment load they're super pigmented um, they're uh, bound with uh, blackberry honey um, which keeps them relatively moist and so some people don't like that they're like that but I love it because you just go to wet them and they're ready to go. Um, this is another fun palette you could make at home. Um, I like saving money so this is actually an Altoids tin and I just opened it up spray painted it white not that you could tell because I've been mixing paints on it added my half pans and a sponge because I like to use sponges to uh, when you uh, get too much water on your brush you can uh, blot it off or you can use it to clean a brush when it's being stubborn and not getting cleaned. Um, this is all M grams with the exception of one color Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose and then this one um, which my husband hates but I absolutely adore. It's fast becoming one of my favorite colors which right next to my other favorite color which is turquoise by M. Graham but this is a Da Vinci and it's called Nickel Aslo Yellow. My husband calls it Booger Snot. <laughs> so it makes me laugh. 
Um, but it's gorgeous. Look at it. Because I, I put this out just so you can see. This is the nickel as of yellow, and it, it's a gorgeous gold. It's so pretty, and it comes out to really nice yellow. So I actually love the color, and I was really impressed with the Da Vinci paint. And so I actually I will be going to buy my own uh, Da Vinci paint soon um, of nickel as yellow because it re-wets really well. So I'm going to just apologize. My light went out. So I'm going to get that going again for you guys. And then I'll continue and show you some of my brushes that I like to use. Um, if you've been in any of my classes, you know that my favorite, favorite brush is um, the Silver Brush Black Velvets. Um, and I have a few of them, and I don't have them all right here, but the ones that I do have right with me are these three. I have my travel one, um, I have my lovely script brush, and this is, uh, this is called an oval, and I love it so much because, you guys, it's so great. It's great because you can, like, wet it down, like I just used it to wet it down and do a wash on this one, but if you notice, when it gets wet, it comes to the most lovely point and so it's kind of like a, a quill brush in that you got this lovely point so you can still do um, some pretty crazy cool details let me just show you really quick um, so you could do nice shapes too with it so like let's say you want to make some leaf shapes um, you can let's see this is so wet I got it too wet but I just want to show you how tiny you can get things if I get some of the water off on a sponge all right, and then you can be like, Ooh. for it being this really thick, thick brush, you can get some really nice details. So I don't know, can you see that? It's pretty tiny. Look at that one. Love it. So anyway, it's honestly one of my favorite brushes. It's one of the brushes I use absolutely the most. Um, and then honestly, I think one of my kids lost my number eight, which was my second most used brush. And so currently, since I don't have my eight round by Silver Brush, I'm using my travel one a little bit more, and this is a six round. But again, you see that point. They make gorgeous points. And then they're so fuzzy when they're dry. They're actually, um, shh, don't tell anyone, they're squirrel. They're squirrel here, and it's sad, and I feel guilty. Um, anyways. This is the script brush. Do you see how fuzzy it is? It looks so fuzzy, especially against like the white. You can really see how the brushes splay out. Anyways, once you get it wet though, it comes down to such a lovely point and you're able to like draw or do your lettering. If you're into lettering, it's a great brush for that. Um, I have another thing that I use. Um, it's got my quills in it. Actually, this is where I load these brushes up. Um, it's a little bit bigger of a travel container. I've got another script in here. Um, so I've got different types of like sable and the uh, soft uh, bristle here um, and this lovely one. Anyway, they're, they're good. I've got my um, hockey brushes, um, which are great for doing your washes. Anyway, this is another one that it zips closed. Very handy. I always have my sponges for uh, blotting off water on my spun off my brushes when they get too wet. I always have my washi tape, which you can use to uh, tape down your paintings. And then this is the last thing I'll show you guys before I'm going to go. And I hope, I wonder if you guys can hear my kids are goofing off in the kitchen. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this right here uh, is a great travel board. It's super light, it's thin, and can you guess what it is? I'm actually using both sides right now for paintings I'm working on. Um, but you just tape your uh, paper down and you're ready to go. And this is actually made out of a three ring binder. You just take your three ring binder, so this is actually the pocket, see that? And um, I cut it along that seam at the uh, spine and just cut it off real quick and easy and you have your travel board so that you can properly keep your painting. So you see how this one's dry and don't look at the fact that it's not done yet. It's really not done yet. But anyway, um, do you see how nice and flat it is? It's because it's taped down to that board. It kind of takes care of the buckling as it's drying. Um, so right now this one was wet recently, so it's a little bit of a pucker on it. It's still drying. So anyway, I just wanted to show you. This is a great little setup. Um, in class, we'll have palettes uh, for you guys that you guys get to use and be able to take home. They're a little bit different, and you'll see that. But if you decide you want to get into watercolors, you can always come and talk to me in class. And I will enjoy seeing you guys soon, and uh, have a good week. Bye.